pray for you and hopefully uh, you get a hold of this word and see what it takes to survive in this evil world. Let's go on and pray now. We're going to finish our Acts. How many have been blessed in the spirit of the book of Acts? Amen. How many have been blessed in listening at the testimony of Paul and as we've been going through the book of Acts? Amen. And how uh, in the beginning God, amen, amen, he brought the church and how he came in on the day of Pentecost. And I remember when we started the book of Acts, one thing that I wanted God to do was let you guys know that without the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. You have no witness in power. You can't do anything if God is not being endured inside of you. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, the Bible says they have to be filled with the Holy Ghost. They have power to witness. And what that means is that if God is in you, you're not afraid to go out and tell others about the Lord. It's not about us. It's not about who you are and how long you It's about you knowing who God is, and then we have discovered that as we went through the book of Acts, how on many occasions when Paul, he wasn't the man starting off, and God caught him on the road of what? The master, and he had an impact, an encounter with God, and God changed in his life, and people were amazed of this man who once was a killer, this man who used to persecute the church, this man who used to do all sorts of things to the church, now is what? leading the church, ministering to people that he used to hurt and he used to kill and persecute. So a lot of people had a hard time accepting Paul because they didn't want to accept the new man. And even like us today, some of us, amen, we ain't always been where we are or where we at today. And when people see us now in this new lifestyle, in this new walk with God, and some people are amazed and some people don't even yet believe that you have been changed. But let me tell you today, amen, if God is living in you, amen, somebody ought to be able to see it. The Bible says with a city that's set up on a hill, it cannot be hidden. Amen? Amen. So if the Holy Ghost is in you, the Holy Ghost is so illuminated, it's so powerful, it's so real, that even in unwillingness, it's revealing itself. Is that right? And so I was hoping that throughout the book of Acts, that somebody would catch a hold of this thing. Amen. Say, God, heal me with your divine Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. We learn that the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We learn about expectation, sharing. We learn about you know, how important it is for us to go there for the highways and byways, not only preach to our own, but preach to the Jews and the Gentiles and to tell the gospel of Jesus Christ. And by Paul doing this, he encountered a lot of persecution. Amen. He encountered a lot of persecution, sometimes even to the point of death. But because God had made a promise to Paul that he was going to make it to Rome, what happened? Amen. God is still with him, even though he's going through trials and tribulations. Is that right? Amen. Now, uh, I'm going to make this the last time I'm going to say this. This church will never make it on TV. Never. No. Too much movement. Oh, God, I need to make sure that stops. Okay. Because if I have to do it, people may not come back to this church. If you got to move, move. Otherwise, no move. I need y'all to make sure that stops. Amen. If I was on national TV, it would be the most embarrassing thing. People walking every five minutes. Amen. I, I praise three kids. And when Sister Burrell would beat them, y'all see me beat them from the poor kids. Because kids, when people get to walk, and that's the spirit. Amen. Is that right? Amen. So if you have to go, I'm going to give you a few minutes. But if I was on TV, you wouldn't be in the front of my role at the church. That's why you see on TV they have certain professional people. Because too much walking is distraction. That's very disrespectful when you're getting up and walking and walking and walking. We allow you time before service starts to go use the restroom. You have to use it fine. But otherwise, just to be walking and be walking, please don't do that to me. Please. I have to stop it. All right. Urshans, you can't handle the door. I need to put somebody on the door can handle it. Believe me, I can handle the door and do all this at one time. I can do it all at once. I've done it before. But people get mad when the bishop talks. But I have no problem escorting you out the door. I have no problem doing it. Because you know why? The Bible says give honor where honor is due. If the President of the United States was a fair talk, would you walk? Would you no. walk if he's in a ceremony right. to school? No, would sir. you walk? No. You teach your kids to sit down things. Amen. Teach them. That little boy move, you're going to see an electric chair. And if she can't get him out of here, you know why? 
Because if they do it in the house of God, they'll get to school and they'll disrespect leadership. Amen. I'm going to teach you right here. Well, say amen. Y'all don't say amen today. Amen. Amen. Now, that's enough walking. You have to use the restroom. Ursha, get on your job. If you're not going to be on the job, sit down. Because I can handle it. Believe me. Because I'm seeing everything that's going on out here. All right? I'm going to help me out. Uh, Sister Terrell, help me out. Amen. All of y'all sit down. Cameraman, Amen. help me out. All of y'all sit down. Y'all, y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. We talked about honor last week. I, I said, I'm 50-something years old. If you teach it, I'm sitting down. She teach it, I'm sitting down. You know what they're called? They're called honor. Amen. And some people get disturbed when you're doing a lot of movement. People come to church to learn, and learn the word of God. They don't come to see a bunch of running around and stuff. Don't do that. Amen. All right? You kids hear me? Sit down. This should tell you the last time. I'm telling you Amen. love now. Come on, give God a hand of praise if you love him. Amen. <laughs> if some of you ain't got that in a long time, open rebuke is good for your soul. Amen. Amen. So less movement, because if we were paying for TV time, people couldn't even see the messenger because of the walkers. Just look at TV. Do you see people walking on TV when they preach? No. No. You know why? Because they, they got urges to tell them you don't walk during service. They leave them in a special door for them. Now, since we don't have no room, but this is being filmed. So I don't like to look on TV or through the week and see a bunch of movement. I like people to have my attention. So if I'm teaching and preaching to you, can I have your undivided attention for a few minutes and then I'll get you on back to what you need to do? Amen. But back to the Word of God. Amen. So we went to the book of Acts. We talked about the power of our Pentecost, about power, about God moving, about, about, about God coming into the upper room. And that was a great movement, like a rushing mighty wind filled the house. Came in like a rushing mighty wind filled the house. All right. That was a visitation. People spoken out. There was fellowship. There was gathering. There was people getting together. People were getting saved. Haven't we learned that through the book of Acts? People are getting saved. I mean, God is changing the people who people think could be saved because of what? Of the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God will either draw you or it will either drive you. That's right. Amen. So when you come into the word, to the house of God, it's like coming to a restaurant. You are hungry for righteousness. You want to hear what the Word of God is saying concerning the church. And how can you hear without a preacher? And how can you preach except the Lord has sent you? All right. So by God sending me, He's sending me to give you a word today. And we're going to close out in this last chapter of Acts. When we go to the 11th verse, we finish the whole part of it out. Read after three months he sailed from an Alexandrian ship who stood ahead of the Queen Mother, which he had wintered at the ride, and landed at Syracuse, and he stayed three days. From there we circled round and reached Lima, and after one day the south wind blew, and the next day we came to Sicilia, where we found brethren and were invited to stay with them seven days, so we went toward Rome. And from there, when the brethren heard about us, they came to meet us from as far as Aquiforum and three inns. And when Paul saw them, he thanked God and took courage. Now when we now when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard, but Paul was permitted to dwell by himself with the soldiers who guarded him. And it came to pass after two days that Paul called the leaders of the Jews together. So when they had come together, he said to them, Men and brethren, though I have done nothing against our people or the customs of our fathers, yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, wanted to let me go, because there was no cause for putting me to death. But when the Jews spoke against it, I was compelled to appear to Caesar. Not that I had anything of which to keep my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have called for you to see, to see you and speak with you, because for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. Then they said to him, We neither receive letters from Judea concerning you, nor have any of the brethren who came reported or spoken in the evil of you. But we desire to hear from you what you think, for concerning this death, we know that it is spoken against everywhere. So when they had appointed him a day, many came to him at his lodging, to whom he explained the song, the song that testified of the 
explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets from morning till evening. And some were persuaded by faith, some of the persuaded by things which were spoken, and some disbelieved. So when they did not agree among themselves, they departed after Paul had said one word. The Holy Spirit spoke rightly <coughs> through Isaiah, the prophet to our father, saying, Go to this people and say, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand. And seeing you will see and not perceive. For the heart of this people have grown dull. Their ears have hurt, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and tongues, so that I should heal them. Therefore let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had a great dispute among themselves. <coughs> And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all his things to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching us the teaching of things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. If you will look at the 30 and the 31 verse, then Paul dwelt for two whole years in his own rent house mm -hmm. and received all who came to him. Verse 31, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm not going to let nobody turn me around. Turn me around. Hmm. Whenever you're doing something positive, for God. There's much persecution come to it. Rejection. Misunderstood. People will love you as long as you are speaking to their ears the things that they want to hear. But the minute you pierce their ears the truth they become bitter and rejection. Mm. And this has been going on throughout the Bible. Isaiah said that man, you could speak to them all day long. If they do not have the ear to hear, they won't even perceive what you say. It's just like you're talking to these walls. But even in the midst of being rejected, God never meant for us to get caught up in the persecution of ministry. God does not want us to try to fight the battle that does not belong to us. What God needs for us to do is to continue to do what He has called us to do under all circumstances. All circumstances. All right. Matter of fact, Paul tells Timothy, he said, Timothy, make full proof of your calling. Timothy, make sure you understand that why you are called and what you are called to do. Because there will come a time they will give to itch and ears. They will have seducing spirits. There will come a time, Timothy, that it seems like what you are talking will be foreign to them. Because now, they don't want to hear what God says. They're looking for their own God. Yes. And we're living in a time where the church, there are some churches that have set the church up for the people, the people church. I call it the people church. All right. Yeah. No one is preaching truth no more, regardless of what people say or do. It don't matter about the rejection part of it. It don't matter about... If I have to go out and make sure that the house of God is standing on its own. God has called me to something. And who God calls, he qualifies. Amen. Sometimes the qualification is to be qualified to handle persecution. Right. And not fall. Mm -hmm. To be qualified to say, God, I will stand under all circumstances. It don't matter. You called me to this. Amen. 
So as we go to the book of Acts, everybody, we love when the deliverance comes. We, we love when the ship is, 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 is surviving the storm, but we don't like when we are in the storm. That's it. Huh. Many Christians, when they're in the storm, they're not storm proof. Because they haven't put on the whole armor. That they may be able to stand against the wild. Ship makes you've been in the military. We fix the ship for the storm. And sometimes when the ship can't stand the storm, we anchor out. Look at somebody and say, you got to anchor. You better make sure your anchor hole and it's, it's Jesus Christ. It's been times that my life has been in the storm. Well, God, I say, I can't endure the storm. He said, just anchor. Drop your anchor. And those of you who have been in the Navy know what it's like to have a ship in the middle of the storm just rocking. But it ain't going nowhere. Because I'm anchored up. Anybody into this morning? Sometimes your life gets rocky. And sometimes things go on and, and it looks like, my God, the ship is about to break into pieces. But let me tell you something. As long as you drop the anchor and make sure your anchor holds All and right. grip a solid rock. And who's that solid rock? Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus can withstand any storm. Jesus can take you through any situations in your life. If you got him, you'll come out more than a conqueror. Amen. Huh. Amen. So throughout the book of Acts, what have I learned? I learned since God promised Paul. A lot of times, I don't have to go to people. I go to the one that promised me what he's going to do. Too many of us will go back and start asking people, what did I do wrong? Why I ain't getting blessed? Well, won't you go to the one that promised you? And won't you, won't you hear him say, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I didn't tell you that weeping, I didn't tell you when the morning would come, but I told you it's going to come. Hallelujah. Can you wait till the midnight? Can you endure your midnight trials yeah. and tribulation? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and out of the wings of an eagle. Amen. So I look back and I've learned that even in my persecution, even in my struggle, mama, even in the days where it seemed like I can't make it, I got to go back to what God promised. Amen. He told Paul, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. Shipwreck. Broken to pieces. But you will make it. Oh, huh. uh, you asked me. I was looking back at some pictures the other day in my office. And I took some down because back in the day I was smiling. But it ain't a smile the day to day. And so I said, I got the right to take down what I want off the wall. Because to me, I don't feel like smiling right now. I'm, I'm going on, but... That picture reminds me of, oh God, have mercy, chapter 2. And I've already endured that. So I want to take that picture down and I want to put another picture up. Because I'm not a freshman or I'm a senior now. Come on, somebody. And some of you need to do the same. Right. Some of you need to go back and realize where you came from. And thank God I'm not what I used to be. I'm a little smarter. I'm a little wiser. I'm a little better. I'm a little stronger. I'm a little smarter right. than what I was Amen. before I got saved. Do I got That's anybody right. in this room Amen. that's better than what you want before yeah. you start? your journey. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Not gonna let nobody. Amen. So sometimes, Mama, we got to reach back and encourage ourselves. Amen. But let me tell you something. God always have a ram in the bush. If the ram ain't there but for five minutes to tell you to hold on. Amen. Come on, tell somebody. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You know what's missing in the church? What God always desires for the church to have. Any corporation, any organization should have four elements that keep their organization running. First of all, teaching. Teaching is very important in anything you do. A lot of you are in organizations and you don't even understand what the mission of the organization is. Teaching is very important. Whether it be in marriage, whether it be in ministry, whether it be in business. I told my boss the other day, what is the logo to have on the building if you're not going to live according to it? Our logo in the fire department is protecting those mm -hmm. who protect us. Mm -hmm. So guess what? When I'm going to a fire, I'm not thinking about myself. I'm thinking about the people that stay up all night fighting them gunfires over there. So I'm not going to Sit there and be scared. I'm going in. My thing is to protect those who protect us. Well, what did God call you to? He called you to be a soldier. He called you to be on the battlefield for Him. And so what is, what is missing in, 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 in need to be incorporated is 
First of all, teaching and fellowship. I said, God, you know, a church can't grow without fellowship. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, uh, Amen. well hello. Yeah. I know I'm quiet. Yeah. 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 See, you can't, you can pray all you want, but you can't love your brothers and sisters and get along. Ain't going to grow in there. It ain't even no communication in there. Yeah. And so, so, you know, I can tell when a church is about to break up. Less fellowship. Yeah. We use in the world, you're home with your pockets all day long. You went to the club with them. You, you did beach parties overnight. We all don't say anything. Yeah. But now all of a sudden at church, oh Lord, I got to get out of here. Yeah. You ain't got five minutes of fellowship with your That's brother right. and sister? Well, who are you fellowship with? Amen. Who? You young people, you, y'all should be the best of friends. Get out to church. How can we look at No, you want to run out there and get with your little wild friends, the little wild chickens, the rooster, ah. the one that got you acting like a bunch of devils. Amen. But when you come to the house of God, you roll your eyes at each other. Yeah, amen. Oh, it's quiet this morning. Amen. No, you can't fellowship with anybody you don't like. Let's just go and fix that real quick. I don't want to shake nobody's hand. Who don't want to shake mine? Let's just go to clear that up. <laughs> so we got a bunch of fake folks in the house of God, mama. Or you're going to give them the right hand of fellowship, they give you another hand. Amen. And you can feel when people don't like you. That came from just contribution of mother with sin. Well, amen. I don't need to fast for seven days to find out you don't like me. I can look at you dead in your face when you see me. There's a certain yeah. look on your face yeah, tell yeah. me you don't like me. Amen. Well, say amen to that. Amen. I don't have to go ask the prophet. I don't have to write 39 names to your prophet. I can look at you dead in your eyes. And your eyes going to tell me what you think about me and how you feel about me. Because your eyes get to going up and down. I didn't ask you to go up the top of my head. I asked you to look at my shoes. I asked you to look at me. Amen. True fellowship Start with Asha. <laughs> you want to know what a person think about you? Look at them dead in their eyes. Yeah. It goes straight to their soul. You fell in love with a devil looking at them in their eyes. Amen? <laughs> Boy, it's quiet today. That's why when I shake your hand, I'm going to look at you dead in your eyes. I'm going to make contact with you. I can tell something wrong with you. Then I say, oh, you know, brother, go and do something. No, I didn't know look at his tie. I looked at his eyes. <laughs> Police can tell when you're ready to get your gun. By your eyes. All right. Mm -hmm. huh. Well, help me somebody. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, help me somebody. And so, fellowship. We teach fellowship. Some months back, I think, find your partner in the church. Pray with us. Amen. Did you do it? No. <laughs> no, I know. Because some of you call me all day long. And there's more than one person in this church. I'm the pastor. I, I'm talking to the Lord. You want to talk to me, but you can't even talk to your brother and sister every day. My God. Yeah. Okay. Now, what's going on in Mark? That one out. Fellowship. Yeah. yeah. I did not devilship. Fellowship, when you come together and you remind each other, you embark on the word, and that's a good word. Let's get into that word. How many of you read the scripture this week? I said, I fellowship shared the word of God. You're texting everybody else. What you text a scripture? <laughs> not some scripture they read on TV. Text the ones the pastor talked about so you can have fellowship. Remember the message? Amen. Somebody want to text you all this other stuff. You better understand the scripture you're reading now. They want to text you some prophecy from the Lord. That ain't what Bishop preached. Amen. That ain't what was served on Sunday. Text what I served on Sunday. And then eat on that. Because I'm going to teach you what I said. Are you going to be able to go back and say, Bishop talked about love and fellowship? Well, I got another word. I didn't understand, Bishop. You didn't understand because you didn't like when I told you that, amen, you should love your husband and love your wife. You got mad. You shut down on me. You mute me out, but it don't matter. God, remember that. And I still say their ears become dirty. They won't even perceive. So I want to preach to somebody who want to hear me. Amen. I want to preach to the Lord and say, Pastor, help me out this morning. Paul is now on the ocean, moving toward the land. They are out there in the water, which is life every day. We are out there in the storm, going through things. People are trying to, people are trying to tear us down. People are trying to put us down. Pressure of life. All right. 
Every time I try to do good. Yeah. Yes, sir. And now we're in a war. Mm -hmm. But we're not on the ship by ourselves. Sir. I'm so glad that I didn't go to the ship. I'm so glad that I didn't join ministry by myself. But I have a God that is with me at all times. So Paul is out there. He's, he's roaming. He's moving throughout the ocean. And then there was a time that God allowed him to be able to tell his testimony to as why he was where he was to his fellow brother who was not there present at his time of being persecuted. And Paul said, all I ever did was try to preach the truth. I don't know what you heard. I don't know what's circulating up here. But I went to the Gentiles with love. I preached to the Jews with love. And matter of fact, they got me in the court and they couldn't even find no reason to persecute me. But this is what I want you to keep in mind what I said earlier. God never wanted us to get caught up in the persecution of ministry. He wanted us to get caught up in the purpose. And the purpose is to spread the gospel. Amen. And in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, you will be persecuted. Mm -hmm. But many of us get caught up in the well of persecution and we don't finish the purpose. Now watch this. Paul says, I'm bound in chains. Not because I can't get out. Oh, All right. All right. You know, Christianity ain't mean for you to bully God. All right. And some of us try to bully and blackmail God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. God, only reason why I'm doing is because of you, God. I don't need you. That's right. That's right. That's right. You didn't pick me. I picked you. That's right. <laughs> First thing God remind me in Woodsboro, he said, Terrell, you do know you can be replaced. I called you. I chosen you out of darkness. I brought you out of the moral clay. I took you out of stuff that you couldn't get you out. And set your foot on a solid rock. Who did it for you, dude? I said, God, you did. When you weren't even capable of yourself of coming out of things, I chosen you. I purchased you with nothing. He don't you ever try to buck me in me. He said, because any moment, if I want to, I can take you out. Now, how you doing? See, the devil will have you puffed up. Remember I said last week, God ain't puffed up. God ain't, the Holy Ghost ain't puffed up. The Holy Ghost ain't big. The Holy Ghost is very humble, but the Holy Ghost is very powerful, too. And that spirit in Cain and the church. Nobody can make it without me. Let me tell you something. God got a choir that you can't even touch. That's right. Amen. God got a musician with a will run you up off this earth. All God right. got Gabriel that's ready to sound the trumpet and he ain't never missed a note. Mm. God got angels and ministers that hosts the ministers waiting to preach them. As a matter of fact, don't even want to preach them, but just want to humble their hands and arm their hands. What I want you to lock into today is that Paul said the reason why I'm in chains is because of Israel. Uh, many of you right now are in battle right now because God has called you to rescue somebody. And you took it in person. God said, I'll put my anointing in you. I entrusted you to get this message over. I've chosen you, Peter. I've given you the keys to the kingdom. You got the keys to open up people's lives. You got the keys to save people that nobody wants to deal with. And you are holy the keys. He said, but upon this rock I build my church. And the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Even the keyhole can't stop the movement of God. Keys don't give you power, they give you permission. Write that down. 
He don't give you power to give you permission to enter. The power is the one that has the authority. And the power comes from God. That's why he told Peter. He said, Peter, I'm giving you the key, not the power. I got the power. You got the key. I give you permission. All right. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Lord, help me close this thing out. Paul is wrong when they arrived. They're wrong when the wind blew. And they're out there for seven days to stop. And everywhere he landed, God blessed him to have someone to encourage him. When that time you just took time out just to encourage somebody? Yeah, we like being encouraged. But every now and then, throw a little courage down to somebody. It's good to see you still holding on, brother. You'll see you good holding on, sister. The Bible says Paul took great courage when he seen him because they came and said some encouraging words to him about, brother, you are still in the race. My mama called me this morning, early this morning. I, she called me for my secret. Now, my mama again, she's getting caught up in you got a cell phone, but yeah. watch it. <laughs> For years, I've been using the home phone. She called me undercover this morning, so I told my wife that somebody called me from Kansas City, and they're never come up. I really don't like to be bothered early in the morning. Left it's an emergency, and only emergency that I'm going to have to just real talk when I see my mama now. My sister's going to be calling me. If they ain't, if they ain't calling her that number, it ain't an emergency. And so my wife said, Well, some kids there. I said, Well, we just let it. So I, I looked down and it was on my phone. So I said, Well, maybe somebody that really needs to reach me. And I called back and she said, Hey, baby. I said, Mama. She said, Yeah. You always call her near early in the morning. Waking me up, I thought I would wake you up. And she said, I just want to tell you. Keep on holding on. Oh, 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 Something about to happen. Yes, the numbers sir. just change. All right. New numbers. Calling me with new numbers. New ideas. All right. And what she said, I ain't going to talk to you, Lord. Just tell the faith mission family. I said, keep on holding on because I'm Amen. holding on up here again. Amen. God bless you. Have a good day, Clay. <laughs> they ain't got time to hear about your situation. She called and did what? With encouraging words. You're not going to let nobody. Turn me around. Amen. The Bible declared that Paul is given permission. God will show you favor. Verse 16, God gave him favor. Paul was permitted to dwell by himself. How many of you spend a little time with God this week? You need some time by yourself. Amen. Right, Yes, sir. Because when you by yourself with God, you ain't got to worry about it in him. Turn the TV off. Turn the radio down. Turn your cell phone off, not on vibration. Off. <laughs> Silence. Silence. God will give you talk. Told the Lord this week, I said, I need to hear from you. He said, turn the volume on everything. Get to me together. Go to a quiet place. I will talk to you. All right. Won't he, won't he do it? Yes, sir. And he would give you time to get to a quiet place. But some of them have abused their time. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's too quiet here. Yeah, God's trying to talk to you. You ain't used to being by yourself. You used to know it. You used to somebody calling you with all kind of stuff. When it gets quiet, it's scary sometimes because you'd be like, oh my God, it ain't never been this quiet in a long time. And he begins to speak to you. One of the things that God does whenever he talks to his children, he reminds us how important fellowship is. Then he talks to us about breaking bread. Then he talks to us about prayer. Praying in season and out of season. Because in prayer you're communicating with God and sometimes God is communicating back to you things that you need to do or you should be doing. So when you come out of communication with God, no matter what's going on in your life, you should come out with power to endure. Because God ain't never quit. Never. He never quit. All right. 
A delay is not time. Sometimes you got a layover. Sometimes you got to have a layover. Sometimes it's time for you just got to get you, you, you're tired. You just want to not quit. Don't turn the car all the way off. Put the emergency lights on. Let people know that you're just on the side of the road temporarily. I'm not here. It's not a layover. Put your emergency lights on. All right. So Paul is there. God is delivering him, giving him time to himself. And he goes and he wants to talk to the brothers about why he's where he's at. Why he's in his predicament. You know, I began to rejoice the other day when the Lord told me, Terrell, when you find out where you at, it ought to make you happy to know why you where you at. The reason why a lot of us can't celebrate where we at because we don't know why. <laughs> Won't you ask the Lord, why am I in Rome? Why am I in change right now? Right. Why am I in this situation that seems like it's beating me down? Huh. He'll whisper back to you, didn't I tell you I got to take you somewhere? In order to get somewhere, you got to go somewhere. Uh, I tell you all the time, I don't like going to Refugio, but that's on the way to Houston. <laughs> don't despise the small things. Amen. Don't get upset with God because you had a red light that seems like it's changing fast enough. Don't get mad with God because the people that you've been depending on, that you trust, all of a sudden they're acting silly with you right now. Just be reminded that God promised that I was going to make. Now, I'm in change, but I understand why I'm in change. Now that I understand why I'm in change, I can deal with the change. And the change won't change me. Boy, that'll preach. God help me. Change shouldn't change you. You should change the change. All right. Oh, Lord, it's quiet. I, I, I don't know what was going on with my chest, but I told my wife the last 48 hours there's been something going on in here. Now, I ain't, I'm, I, I'm, I'm fine. I don't, I don't claim no heart attack or nothing. But I think what's going on in here is God is pumping me up for a situation. I really believe that. I believe if I can endure this intensity of this pain yes. and not claim it, oh, yeah. Lord, all right. All glory right. to God, but not claim it, but it, it, it endure it. Say, yeah, 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 I know you're there, but yeah. you ain't getting me. You ain't taking me out. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer. Yeah. I can do all things through Christ. And my God says, oh, if I can talk to the pain. Yes. All right. Yes, sir. That's what I've been doing. I've been telling you, you're going to settle yourself down. You're going to stop moving. Whatever's going on, every time I tell it to settle down, it try to move so well. That let me know that I got control of it. Amen. Come on, high five somebody and say, you can set the climate control. Don't let the climate sit. You set the control with your mouth, the way you think and so the man thinks. And so now Paul is sitting there. He understands I'm in this predicament because of Israel. And I want you to know that throughout the book of, of Acts, Paul has suffered intensity persecution. Sometimes persecution is okay, but when you in intensity, huh. you know intensity means yeah. you. <laughs> Sometimes when you in intensity persecution, God sends somebody to notarize it and to reach out to you. All and right. tell you, I know we can may endure for night, but joy coming in the morning. The Bible says, as Paul was in intensity persecution, they notarized, had reached out to him, and said to him, said, Paul, said, Paul, man, we heard some things was happening to you, 
uh, and Taurus, but 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 it was a negative report. They say that you didn't make it, and, and I was it was a lie. I told my wife the other day, it's a conspiracy that is right. going on yep. around Corpus Christi. Amen. 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 That, that they believe that we are buried it and we didn't die. And that's why today, Franklin, do me a favor. We got to get the lawnmower started up. I have to cut the grass. I can't let my land go. I can't let the weed. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I can't let the weed grow up over my blessing. Right. And as a God has promised me, He gave me a promised land blessing. I can't let the trash blow into my blessing. Oh, come on, somebody. Go home and clean up that car that God gave you. Right. You got to be grateful for what you have. And tell the devil, I'm not going to let nobody. Nobody. That's it. That's it. Broken lawnmower. Turn me around. Uh. Oh. Amen. You're right. What I always say when I'm missing. So you're right. Keep shooting. Keep shooting. <laughs> Keep shooting, coach. You're right. Set your foot. You're right. Words of encouragement. When the last time somebody told you, you can shoot better than that. You can pray better than that. You, I know you better than what you are right now. Every time when we are intensity, we need somebody to reach out to us that has reaching power. Your brother and sister is overtaken in the fall. You with your spiritual. See, not you with your full of teaching. You that know the Bible from... <laughs> you with our spiritual because All the church right. is a spiritual operation. Yeah. The church is not a fleshly operation. The church yeah. is operating under the unction of the Holy Ghost. You which are spiritual. Restore such one in the spirit of what? God ain't giving you general by now. And then we got a word to use in scripture. I got a word from the Lord. That's a witchcraft straight from the pits of hell because God ain't going to come to me any kind of way. Amen. 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 That's why I don't get on. If I can't reach you from the pulpit, my text won't help you. That's right. Amen. And I'm serious about it. Let me tell you why I say that. Because if you don't receive me verbally speaking to right, you, right, right. No. That's, that's fellowship. If I can't tell you I love you verbally, uh -huh. write the letter, you're going to probably just burn it up. That's right. Who called me to this thing? Not my mother, not my daddy, but God. Paul is into this thing with Jesus. Paul didn't join ministry. Because of nobody but Jesus. Amen. And I want to clear something up. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> ah. Woo! Uh, come on, all right. Mm. Mm. God be good to me, Sister Stewart. Amen. And every time I try to tell God I can't make it, He said, You remember when you was in the red shirt? Yeah. Uh. And your mama couldn't reach you? You remember when you was in. And by ran and the missiles were flying over your head. Who brought you out? I said, you can. Amen. He said, now why are you going to let somebody turn you around? Yeah. I, I don't want to call you a nobody, but in case you the nobody, you ain't going to turn me. And you can identify who your nobody is. Right. Right. No husband. No wife. No children. No job. No bank account. No pastor. No prophet. No, come on, nobody! Yeah. All right. No pain. All right. Paul said, what you separate us? Right. See, God ain't never divorced me. I ain't about to divorce me. All, All right. right. Amen. Amen. I'm about to get out of here. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, what you separate you from the love of God? Persecution. Tribulation. Death. He said, all these things we are more than a conqueror. Because God married me for life, and I'm married to Him. Look at somebody say, I'm married to ministry for life. I'm married to ministry when misery is ministry. I'm married to ministry when nobody's here. I'm going to stay with God in the storm. I'm going to stay with God in the rain. I'm going to stay in God with my children leaving. I'm going to stay with God if the doctor tell me I got six months to live. I'm going to stay with God because He said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Lift your hands and shout glory and tell somebody, I'm not going to let it. I'm here. He said, I'm I don't get this message out. I ain't scared. All right. Some of you scared. Some of you, the devil, they got you scared. You done looked at that.
that demon dead in your face. And he said, you preach another message, I'll leave you. I'm going to tell you something. I've been by myself. I'm used to being by myself. Hallelujah. I ride in my car by myself. I go to work by I go to the bathroom by myself. God, I'm glad I'm there, but I don't need no help right now. I thank God I go by myself. Hallelujah. You ought to take it by yourself. You ought to pray by yourself. You ought to be able to go to church sometime by yourself. Oh, I can't go because you that's a lie. You don't take me, I ride the bus by myself. Matter of fact, I got feet, I walk by myself. Because right. as long as I got King Jesus, I don't up in here. Hallelujah, yeah. because he'll walk with me. He'll talk with me. He goes with me everywhere I go. He said, you make your bed in hell, I'll be there with you. He said, you get up in the airplane, the airplane get to acting funny. Just call on me. I'll get in the pilot seat and I'll make the airplane straighten up. Hallelujah, I don't never get on a flight without Jesus. Hallelujah, some of you get on there with your American Express card, your bank card, your ID, but every time I get on, I say, Lord, I need you to step aboard with me. Hallelujah. And I look at the pilot and I say, I know you fine, but I know who's driving. Yeah, yeah. Right. God have mercy. Nobody. A little boy asked me the other day, he said, Daddy, he said, ISIS in Texas after ISIS has been in Texas. They've been cutting heads off but just now viewing. They've been cutting heads off. Uh, God just ain't showed you the head being cut off. Throughout history, people have been cruel. And now all of a sudden, everybody's scared. ISIS. I ain't scared. The person I'm scared of is the one that look at you every day and stab you. At least ISIS don't let you know I'm coming to get you. But you got some people sitting right next to you and stab you in your back. And you say, I love you. They stab you in the back trying to cut your neck. But I'm going to tell you something. No weapon that form against me should prosper. Now ISIS, not the Ku Klux Klan, not you, not Israel, not my mother, not my daddy, not Christ of God. Nobody. Amen. Amen. Now say amen. And if you're, amen. you're scared. You're scared to say amen if you're scared. Because no weapon. And if you kill me for me to leave the cross. Oh, you see, y'all, y'all don't like scripture. Y'all want another prescription. For me to live is Christ. And if I die doing what I'm doing, I'm a game. Two more minutes. I'm going home. <laughs> Just a minute, I got to go home. God put in a, a platform. Paul to stand on. Let me tell you something, God, about this. I want you to write this down. Your persecution builds your platform. Ah, uh, some of you, <laughs> y'all know write that down. You ever want to know about a man's life? Amen. These young men who, I tell the guy the other day, when them guys get to get to the place where they went through school, they survived, the coach tell them they couldn't make it. Amen. They survive all negativities from the people and they get to that big platform they sit on national TV and they tell the coach, you ain't going to break me down. Why? This just didn't start here. In the 8th grade, they told me I wasn't going to make it. In the 5th grade, they told me I couldn't do it. And now I arrived to my last year before we get picked up in the NBA, you think I'm going to let you tell me I can't make it? My persecution has built my platform. Uh -huh. So if you have no persecution, you have no platform. <laughs> ah, glory to God. And the reason why I'm able to stand tall is because I've been through a lot of stuff. The reason why I can stand and look over my enemy is that I'll make your enemy your footstool. Amen. You know why I know the enemy my footstool? Because my enemy has taught me how to stand. So because I have loved my enemy, I'm taller than him. Stronger than him. Why? Because I have survived their attack. Paul has built his platform. And now he's able to stand on the thing that he's been through. Now I want to tell you something. Quit asking God why. And start thanking God that you survived everything you've been through. Because you are a lot better than what you were before you started. I 
you gonna write a book without a chapter? Right. <laughs> How are you gonna write a song without a lyric? Some of the greatest books I've read is people that been through it. And they're writing about it. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, God wants you to write this year. He wants you to be a writer, not a reader. Wow. Ah. A writer, not a hallelujah. Writer. You didn't read everybody else's chapter, but I want you to write this year. I want you to write down. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey man, amen. She left me. She thought I wasn't going to make it, but I'm bigger than what I was. He walked out on me, told me I wasn't going to make it, but I'm better than what I was. The job told me that I could make it, but I'm now I'm moving up in the next position. Hey man, they told me that I wasn't promotable, but they told me I couldn't pass. But now I'm getting ready. Come on, somebody. You got to let the devil know you have built a platform, and I'm about to speak. All right. Uh, Maybe the last message. But it was a good Amen. It was true. Paul talks to them. He said, I've been doing nothing but from morning to evening. All I've been doing is talking about the Lord. Christians, our conversation should be about the things Amen. of God. Yes. Fix your affection on the things of what? Of God. Some of you so much in love with the world. That's why you got worldly tender. Everything gets to you. He don't speak to me no more. Boy. Hello. Woo-hoo. <laughs> Do you find in the Bible that they spoke to Jesus? They talked about him. That's right. Huh. And majority of the time when they were speaking to him, they would ask him for something. <laughs> If you be God. Ah! See, anytime time the devil speaks to you, he's going to pretty much try to insult you because you have already put up this thing that I am Holy Ghost, fear, sanctified, I'm living for God, and I have no, no evil have I done all day long. And that is a lie. The Pentecost folks kill me. They save all day long, and no evil have I done. I may not have done either, but I sure thought. <laughs> Come on, say. Evil approached me, but I was able to come back with good. All right. Evil pushed me. I swelled up like I was gonna hit it. Some say it ain't even worth to hit. That's right. And last week we talked about that twenty-three million dollar slap that guy gave his wife. <laughs> I bet you wish you could put it to I'm already in the I'm already rich. See, people want to pull you out of your anointing. Yes, sir. The devil comes to provoke you and pull you out of a place that God has already purposed for you to be. Yeah. That's why when you, when you find out who you are, you can handle what you're going through. All right. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Come on, give God a hand for praise Amen. that. The devil don't mess with junk. The devil mess with something that is, that is worthwhile. So we, 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 we come to the close of Paul. Paul says, now, now, now some people were persuaded <laughs> by the things that you've spoken, but you always got some disbelief. Right. Where the Lord at now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Probably really told how many days? I was told 24. God sent a prophet all the way from Houston and tell us a word. I sure have been stirring the Kool-Aid. And, and I've been seeing some evidence of the sugar. Amen. Because I don't believe the man. I believe the God in the man. Amen. And, and I'm, I'm going to tell you something. See, some of y'all get caught over that before. No, God ain't going to never send a false word. It might be a word just to show you how false you are. <laughs> we believe everything except God. Somebody come here right now. Give me two hundred dollars and your problem will be over with. Some of y'all throw the package. Let, no, let me throw. Let me do that. Let me two. Let me get two for you, partner. Let me get two because I need the problem to be over with. All right. Yes, sir. Guarantee you, if I get some, somebody come here right now and start it, he'll probably collect about three thousand right now. God just showed me that some of you is in the trouble right now. Give me, uh, give me two hundred. We'll get you out overnight. Oh, I need that. Let me borrow two hundred. Let me get two hundred. Because we like that. Instead of saying, you know what? You're right. But God promised me that He'll never leave you nor forsake you. So, I'm going to bless you, but not based upon what you say. 
I'm based upon God's word. That's why I say never give something trying to gamble God. Don't ever try to gamble God. A lot of y'all have done it. Hey, my tie this week. I'm going to need something great this week. Uh -huh. You so far behind your tie, you're, you're in debt. <laughs> if I have to trust your tie, then I would, you, you ain't good with me. God said, I just want you to love me. Just bring what you got in love. And let's, go. let's just do this in love. Let's not make a deal. Quit making a deal with God. Some of you didn't make a deal with God so much that God has looked at you and said, they don't even realize they're fooling their own self. Help us, Lord Jesus. That's why I stopped doing that. I said, God, I don't even make no you do you just let me put all that. Yes. Yeah, you know, this year I'm a I'm a really cut the grass. You know, this year I'm a my husband can talk about me all he wants, but this year I'm gonna hold my peace. And you be the first one to break the gun out when that joke will say something. Because he'll he'll get under the devil's under. That's right. That's the devil will right. be dead in your temple, not you now. See, I hate you. And then stomp you. You love Jesus? Oh my. You down there. I love Jesus, but right now you didn't hit me. Now, I thought you had Jesus in you. I thought you said that nothing was going to separate you. Now, listen, now, you, now, now, I ain't a killer. Don't push me. No, you you supposed to be a Christian, not a killer. <laughs> See, we say all these things. And the devil know that we are counterfeit in our mind. So what he does, he comes and kicks us what we didn't testify. Amen. So I quit. Uh-uh. And all that talking, loud talking, and getting up. Confessing, you going to do this. Come on, devil. That's all you got? <laughs> He said, oh, I got to come off. I got a bag, though, you didn't know nothing about. I'm coming through the chimney on you. I'm coming up under the bed like Frank Kruger. I'm going to grab you in the bed. You thought I was going to come to the front, though. That joke will lay right there in the bed with you. Just reach over and go, Rah! And you go, where you come from? He said, I'm that snake in the fire. Anytime things get warm. He said, you come out of me. He'll come out and say, where did this come from? Oh, my God, my own child? My own child? Satan said, yeah, I can get anybody who gets me in. Do you know Satan don't have no certain age to get in? Do you know he'll get in a little baby and have a little baby come crazy? <laughs> <laughs> See, some of y'all that, a little baby will get in you and, yeah. and, and have you possess him. You be looking, you so cute. No, you cute, but you're going to get yourself a baby today. <laughs> it ain't never no baby that I don't care how, you cute. But I'm going to beat the life out of you because you know what? You got a demon in you. And some of that these grandbabies, they so cute. Oh, I don't even want to whoop them. They got you nuts. They don't bite going in. They don't come in and cut your throat. Because see, kids know when you're scared of them. I dare any of my children to come to my house and look like they're going to fuck me in my own house. <laughs> I look right at them like, yeah, you at the house. Did you forgot when you were right there? Come over here. Come over with that spirit if you want to. Oh, you're going to give me some gas. Oh, I'm going to give you some gas, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and we're in this, this land right now. We have, let this, we have let the power of God leave out of our home. We talked about honor and respect. Some of you playing games with the devil of all age. When you tell these kids to go to bed, you should have to go back in there three times. <laughs> Come on, turn the light off now. <laughs> I ain't gonna talk about my other sister because she went told on that when I talked about Teresa. She called me. My mama didn't talk but one time. You hear me? And that second time, your eardrum, you didn't hear nothing. She, you, she was talking, but you didn't know what she was saying because she slapped you dead in your ear. You didn't know she was quoting scripture. You know she was cussing or what? My mom just she stopped our ears first. I don't know why she did that. I don't know if she was saved or nothing. She just hit us in the ear. We couldn't hear it. Now we just see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. You kids talking about child abuse. Yeah. You talking about y'all getting child abuse. All right. Tap you right now. You on the ground house. Y'all know who we coming to the parents this place? Do a round house on you and a minute kick you in your stomach. You think she going to hit you in your ear? You fall <laughs> <laughs> Don't you play with me. <laughs> y'all see some of y'all we talking about child abuse today yeah yeah man if that's the case i'm gonna go follow my parents go, go, follow my dad right here i'm gonna be in court next week i'm gonna grab me all in my throat at the game you gonna listen to me i'm like him up i can't talk <laughs> you kids talking about child abuse y'all spoiled generation that's why y'all crazy and doing all this. I'm just talking to you kids. That's why y'all know. You, you wouldn't even roll your eyes at grown up back in here. Now y'all get mad. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm going to take you home. Don't beat them in the public. Because this, this generation right now, you can't knock them out. you go going to jail. <laughs> Lord, you got you to gotta not get a witness. Take them home. Get them in the room. <laughs> Make sure nobody's looking. And I mean lay them out. <laughs> the guardian home. 
But this generation right now, you hit a kid, you going to jail. <laughs> but the police talk them all day long. Yes. Beat them in the middle of the street and look at you and say, what you going to do, Tommy? Right. Come on up here. I want you to come up here. I'm going to stomp you too. So before the police stomp him and drag him all around, I'm going to be the first witness. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't have to worry about that. Look at me, son. The police stomping you. I'm going to keep you out of stomping territory. I'm going to train you up in the way that I want you to go. That's when the police say stop, you going to stop. Because when I say stop, you going to stop. I am the police. I'm the Jewish that you have authority. You see, some of us don't do that no more. That's why our kids are all raised up at us. And then we go, try to stop the police from being a kid. I dare you. Jump out there, mother. Jump out there. They're going to tase you too. <laughs> and your pit bull. Take it all of you. You know why? Because we're, we're, we didn't got out of control in this nation, Sister Stewart. We're out of control. Everybody thinks they're more powerful. Everybody thinks they're smarter than the police. You don't tell me what to do. Riding around with all this loud music on, rapping, I'm going to kill me somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Pump it up. Pump it up. And all that stuff is in your mind. All them rapping songs, they don't pull you over. Pop them when they pull you over. Pop them all right, you're going to get popped. See, we listen to all this old stuff. The car wash that they got pulled up. I'm going to kill me somebody. I'm going to kill me somebody. I hope it ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wrap it up like, he here. Who are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, popping it loud. People were getting in their car running. I mean, I'm going to wash my car. I mean, it was pumping it up. Bass hit, boom, boom, boom. Kill me somebody, boom. Back in my mind, I'm thinking, I feel like killing somebody. No, no, no. I made that bass say, no. I'll reverse that curve. I mean, you know, but sometimes you be like going through some things, you be like, feel like killing somebody. Somebody ride up and pump it up and put it up a little bit domestic. No, nah, don't listen to that stuff. When you're going through marriage problem, don't put on somebody, somebody, I'm going to find me somebody else. I'm going to find me somebody else. Okay, I'll save you all. You listen to that stuff, it's going to get in your spirit, and guess what? You gonna, no, you ain't going to find somebody. Somebody's going to find you. And since you already said you're going to find you somebody else, they're going to show up and say you don't have to look no more. No, Let me go. I have to get out back So then, if I, if I stay where I am, if I know that I feel said that the people who hear you will hear and shall not understand like, I want you kids to understand. I don't want you kids going home and I want you kids to go on and come say, what's your pastor coming? He talked about not letting nothing turn it around. You know what? I'm not going to let this. Because let me tell you something, young folks. The devil, the devil would love to steal your destiny. The devil would love to steal your career, your future. The Bible says he come to rob, steal, kill, and destroy. Uh -huh. Okay. So the only killer out is Satan. Mm -hmm. Do y'all hear me? That's the only one out because the Bible says he comes around still killing the sick. And he gets in people to make them think they kill. People are not. God said everything I made is good. But people put on this image. And it can be used by anybody. So if Satan knows you have a future. He don't care about your eyes or your hair. He cares about your future. Because your future is something that is designated by God to help many people. So what he wants to do, he wants to come and stop your future. If I can stop you in your future from proceeding to be where you're at, then I'll stop ministering. I'll stop kingdom work. He tried to stop me every single other moment. That's why, young folks, I'm going to tell you something. You ain't the only one been through. That's why I appreciate you so hard. Satan would use somebody beautiful to stop your dream. Yes. Old oh, folks, can y'all say amen? Amen. Yes. You know, amen. know that, that person. And he will fix them just the way you want them to look like. Amen. 
He could transform himself. To, he says all the right things. She says all the right things just to get you from reaching your goal. Now let me say this, and, 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 and I can say what's happening in ministry is that Satan has sent a lot of people to stop the work of God in ministry. So what he does, he sends the spirit of Jezebel in the church. Now Jezebel can be a man or a woman. Don't get it wrong. Everybody thinks Jezebel is a woman. Jezebel is a spirit. Jezebel can come in your marriage. Jezebel can come in your mind. And it's a spirit to distract you. The spirit of Jezebel is in the land right now. Amen. Oh, y'all hear me? The spirit Amen. of Jezebel. Jezebel. Paul talks about it in the last days. They become lovers of themselves. I have never seen so many men that hooked up on themselves. Ain't nothing wrong with popping up, getting swole, looking good. But it's a Jezebel spirit. It's no longer a fitness spirit. Amen. It's a spirit of Jezebel to distract. I think we should look good. Women, I think y'all should look good. But when you're working out to distract somebody, that's a spirit of Jezebel. Amen. Now, now they're quiet. I think we should have a fit church. I think we should have people coming here, look good, the clothes fitting. But when you're doing it to tempt somebody, right. it's the spirit of Jezebel, right. whether it's male or female. Right. No age either. But let's get that straight. That's right. That's right. We have some older people. That's very looking at young people. Right. And they what they call them cougars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's going from a cat to a cougar. <laughs> that guy said, man, I got me a cougar. I said, a cougar? <laughs> yeah, man, I got me a cougar. He was just bragging, man. She and I, he said her age. I said, hey, a cougar? <laughs> he said, man, I'm going to show you the picture. Oh, cougar. Yeah, the cougar. I said, a cougar with a gorilla mind. Because if y'all little girls, y'all kidding. You might, you ain't no cougar. A cougar is somebody who has been out in the jungle right. and it survived. Uh, yeah. Y'all are kidding. Meow! Meow! Yeah, I said, meow. And them dogs will tear you up. A cougar will hump her back up and say, come on here, dog. I know how to handle you. A kid runs in the corner. Go. Go. I'm like, you quit. That's a kid. A cougar say, don't play with me. I'll rip your whole head off. That's the difference between a kid and a cougar. So you go get your cougar? The young lady go grab one of these older guys. They ain't puppies, they dogs. Woo! Puppy will lick you, a dog will bite you. Ah! You won't run out there and think you're going to grab somebody. You grab one of them grown men, he'll bite your head off, and have you stand on somebody's corner, and you're going to be paying for the wheels on this car. <laughs> now go on out there and grab one if you want to. A puppy follows you around. You pay his. He have you pay a puppy. A puppy with milk breath. Have you pay everything? You pay for you. You tell me. I want to sound good. Okay. A dog. You gonna go buy me a set. <laughs> now reach out there and be cute if you want to. You have to go over and talk about they, what they call that that TV show where they say they come get you and take you and put you on the street. No, you know what I'm talking about. Them little girls, they take them over to other countries and they... Oh, yeah. Uh, huh? Sex, uh, trafficking. Yeah, There's a lot of trafficking yeah, going on in church. Yeah. In America, you ain't talking about trafficking yeah. overseas. It's a bunch of people right now in Corpus Christi, but think they in L.A. Right. Man, dressing like you in Hollywood. <laughs> you go over there and check it. You go to L.A., you won't even stand in L.A. You go to Chicago, you won't even survive on the streets of Chicago. You can go up to Houston right up the road. Some of you will get turned straight out. My God. That girls in Houston knocking dudes out. <laughs> Houston girls look different than the Corpus Christi girls. That's just real talk. Because they are all night fighting them dogs. There's a lot of dogs in Houston. There's some dogs in Corpus. But you go to Houston, you go, come on, y'all. Anybody been up there? That's yeah. what my family came to say, Ron, Ron's a big dude. He said, Dad, I don't play around here. 
John Ryan up there one day with his, like he got his head turned to the side. Well, second, get that head off your head. What he do to knock you straight out and pump your chest and resuscitate you and knock you out of you? Carpenter, 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 Christian, he did not. CC. CC. Crime rate at H Town is a lot different than CC. What go on H Town don't go on in CC. I'm trying to tell y'all things. That's why I'm just trying to say I'm keep my kids in CC. <laughs> you drop on an H Town, when even what? Six months later, he on TV with his shirt out with two guns. Holler at me, partner. <laughs> I'm gonna holler at you. I told my wife we going right on up there. You remember? Yeah, I'm in college. Got his shirt off. H Town. Holler at me, partner. I said, Run G, the pastor son. <laughs> then God turned out. <laughs> I ran up there quickly. I said, Ron, whatever's going on, man, just remember who you are in the Lord, brother. I came up you get a degree. I didn't send you up here. Hey, Amen. The brain don't trap you back to my house. You right, Pa. I said, Ron, face phone, man. Hold on, brother. TV, get your education. <laughs> Yeah, I try to run up there and save my son. The Lord said, you don't know what he's going through. I went up to TV. <laughs> Mom said, daddy be everywhere. I said, who? He be everywhere, Pop. I went up to TV high school. Uh, high school. TV, and I walked up there and see what my boy had to put up with. I blessed him. He said, Lord, what? He said, I'll be asking for one of them. And I got up out of there. Got up out of there. <laughs> see, we want to judge people, but you don't know what these kids go going through. You better know where you sending your kids to. These kids that's playing in college, these good-looking young men, they got girls lined up all around the fence line. And not only girls, then they got to go to class. And the teacher is now hitting on the students. You want to pass? <laughs> Come out of it. They don't even have to go to class. <laughs> and they are the road. You tell them to read. They can't read two pages. <laughs> How did you graduate from college? Get up. Get up. <laughs> Don't you be that woman or that man. Amen. Telling your body to get in there. Satan wants you first. If he can use every part of you, if he can take your identity, he will take your purpose. And in my closing words, Paul is intensively persecuted. But this is what he does in the 30th verse, and this is where I got my text from. The Bible says for two years, he said, people didn't want to hear me. He went and went out of his own heart. Some even let the devil reach you out, you know. Because when you're in your own house, you have your own room. You have your own identity. It's lonely. It's only when you only you know what God called you to and everybody else is against you, but you still have to stand. The Bible talks about him. I said, God, why would he rent out his own house? Because God said he, he, he got tired of the competition. There come a time when you try to reach out to people and these very people will be the ones to change your rejection. Anybody had an a track? Paper, cassette tape before. No, y'all ain't dead. Mm -hmm. Anybody know it? You stick it in and it comes out. <laughs> they always get the favorite part of your song. You go, ah! Stick it back up. Stick it back in and take it. It's not the tape, it's the tape. Yeah. Sometimes it ain't the tape. It's the play. Feeding you up. Taking the life out of you. Feeding you down. Anybody have time getting rejected? I mean, let me tell you, God never meant for none of us in this room to be rejected because God loves us. That spirit comes from Jezebel, spirit of the world. That if you ain't doing what I tell you to do, I'll put you, I'll spit you out. You're like, what did I do wrong? Paul said, all I ever did came to preach to the Jews and the Gentiles. And my very own people reject me. Right. Look what he said. The Bible said he ran out for two years straight. And I want to encourage somebody in this room. You're in a place right now. 
where you have a choice to allow the persecution and the antithesis of what you're going through right now to cause you to walk away from God. Because some of you are loving the situation more than God. You feel if you lose that situation, you can't go on. But let me tell you the game of survival. I'm not going to let nobody turn me around. Amen. Because I realize from the camp that who brought me to where I am. I, I might be in a cul-de-sac for a few minutes mm. trying to find my way back to the main street. You know what a cul-de-sac is. Sometimes you get off and go down the street and you, you can't go nowhere. Some of you are in a cul-de-sac. But I want to encourage you to get out of that cul-de-sac and come back to the stop sign mm. and ask God for the navigation to get you back to where you need to go. Because we all have cul-de-sacs in our life when we get to a place but we're just on a dead end road. But you got to pray. You got to fellowship with people that know how to give you good information, good directions, how to get back to your road you need to be. Paul didn't have nobody but the Holy Ghost. The direction. Paul received all who came. This year is what I want you to do. Don't reject nobody. Because sometimes your blessings may come from the people that you think is somebody. God will use the nobody this year. Some of my best encouragement have came from people that didn't know nothing about me. Then we just saw that yesterday, you guys stopped and said, Old Israel, 1815, 10 years ago. Great man of God. Still touching people's lives. Never told me his name. Right in the store last night. Old story. H M fifteen. Changed my life. I know you impact a lot of people's lives. I'm still in the race, brother, on my last tour. Because of you. Amen. That's his wife. God bless you. All the way. I didn't remember. I know the favor. You get the H M fifteen. I was like, God, like it's people that ain't never forgot. I believe some of y'all think that you've been forgotten. Some of you did some great things. Some of you touched some people's lives. God ain't forgotten. Don't let the things that you're going through right now get the best of you. Please don't do that. Remember what God called you. You know what God said? Because he, he can trust you. You know what God told me to tell you that he said, that's why people cannot still trust them, but trust me even in the midst of their trials. To God, I asked him. He said, ask him what would separate them from the love of God. I said, God, I asked him. He said, after you ask him, tell him to think about it for a few minutes before they give me an answer. Because there's more trials coming. There's more tribulations coming. There's more storms that will come in your life. Because the Bible said, in this world we would have what? Trials and tribulations, but the Bible said, be what? Of good cheer. Look at somebody. I'm going to be happy right now. Be happy. He said, be right of now. good cheer. Why? Because I have what? Overcome the world. What you're going through, God, I've already conquered. I want you to be encouraged. You might have to, you might have to rent your own house this year. You know what your house is? The place that you can well. You get back to you. You get back to you. Do, you need to put a, a reminder note on your forehead who you are and how valuable you are. We talked about that last week. Honor. Some of you don't honor your own self. Some of you lost respect for yourself. So I told me look in the mirror. They don't know who you are. Who I call you to be. I feel like crying right now, but that's a true statement. Because sometimes you got to encourage yourself. Amen. Sometimes when you're at the bottom and nobody believes in you. You got to believe in yourself. In my last words, I would say this: that the kingdom of God is God in operation. I want God in operation in my home, in my heart, in my life, in every area of my life. If God is in operation, then the operation is going to go good. I'm going to have some technical difficulties with it. But if God be for me, he's what? I can't even. 
You turn back to your first love. Fall back in love all over with God again. Make him your number one. Can't hear the other. Stand on your feet. This is Father Richard Week 4. All right, y'all. We're going to be going.